Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Philip Nafziger. What you're about to see is a condensed version of a full-length series available at buildingexpertsinstitute.com. Thanks a lot to Bluebird Roofing for helping make this video possible. Enjoy. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is paint the pipe boot. Our paint's dry, let's go ahead and slide our boot on. I'm gonna go here. Obviously we're gonna need one more shingle underneath this one. One important thing to note when you're putting your pipe boot on, keep your nails away from it if at all possible, six inches, that's, that's ideal. So I've got my nails about six inches away from either side. This is a borderline situation where you might not be sure if one goes over top of the boot or if you put another one underneath. The way that I determine is to measure this. If, if I don't have at least two inches on the bottom, I put one more underneath. And we're right under that at inch and, th inch and three quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one more shingle underneath this pipe boot instead of on top. It's gonna go right about there. Our pipe boots down like that and just for observation purposes those red lines are going to be the edges of the, the flange. Water will be able to get in here but it can travel in either direction like that without hitting any leaks. That's what we want to see. We're ready to nail this down now and you really don't want to skimp on the nails around the edges because these expand and contract a lot with the heat and the cold the temperature changes since they're plastic. So I'm going to go ahead and nail it all around the top edge like that make sure it's nice and solid. Now we can put our shingle around the top. I've got this shingle cut to fit to where my reveal is right where it needs to go, but before I nail it down, I am going to apply my roofing cement to the pipe boot flange before I put the shingle on top. You don't need a lot, just a small bead like that. And that's gonna seal that shingle all the way around that edge. Any water that gets in around this edge can't get past because we've got that cement there sealing it off. After I get the final shingle on, I go back and make sure to trim enough of a rain channel on this edge. I've, I'm a little bit tight there, so I'm gonna open that up just a little bit more. Looking for quarter to three eighths of an inch, what I like to call that pinky spacing. Just like that. That acts as a ditch or a channel to suck in the water and draw it out so that it doesn't go underneath the shingle. The final two steps is fastening down the flange and sealing around the top of the gasket. 
A common mistake people will make is putting the fasteners here on the edge. Water can get underneath here, and if you have a fastener right on the edge, it's gonna hit the bottom of the fastener and cause a leak. We use the gasket screws so that we don't have to caulk and they're not gonna pull out. And instead of going on the edge, come in and come up. Put one there. And that's far enough away from the edge where the water's not gonna hit the bottom of it. Last step is to caulk around the top as an extra protection against leaks at the gasket. You may feel like some of these steps are redundant and you're correct. We wanna have first, second, and third backups in case our systems fail. We wanna make sure that there's a backup for the backup for the backup. That's why we put the cement underneath. That's why we make sure we lap properly. And we also have ice and water shield underneath the pipe boot in case all else fails. This is a great way to ensure peace of mind on your pipe boots so that these don't leak. This situation is a metal pipe flashing. These pipes are venting your HVAC systems and furnaces. I've got our hypothetical hole right here. Metal base goes over top of that. What we're gonna do first when we get our shingles up to it is to install some ice and water shield around it. You'll do two pieces, one coming up from underneath, just like that. And then our pipe flashing will be on top of there. And we're gonna do one more coming down from the top side. Here's the location of our pipe you want to at least have a minimum of five inches exposed. This is going to be good right there like that. Let's go ahead and nail it down. We have a full shingle here you're going to want to cut a dog ear in the top so that any water coming underneath the shingles hits that and gets directed back in. And I'm going to go ahead and put my cement on before I nail that down. Just like that. Got a little bit of cement squishing out at the top. Perfect. Let's do the other side. Going to apply cement as I go and overlap it onto the shingle underneath. That way, every layer is completely sealed around the edge. Once again, apply your cement over top of your previous layers, connecting all the layers together with the cement.
last step now that we've got all the shingles on is to fasten down the edge of the base just to keep the wind from blowing it up. And since this is so large, I will go ahead and put one more in the center. That right there is great. Perfect. There were lots of parts and pieces to these two pipe boots and pipe flashings that we did, but definitely worth it to ensure and give us peace of mind that we're not going to have issues and leaks for many, many years. Now that we've got that taken care of, let's go ahead and move on to our next video. Thanks for watching. Remember, this was a condensed version of a full length video available at Building Experts Institute. Link in the description below. I've got some more videos for you here to watch and don't forget, like, subscribe and share. It helps me make more content like this. Thanks.